Everything that we do right now is very much connected to the revelation of Bahá'u'lláh. Whenever we have a gathering, it, when, we, when we come together, when we say prayers, it's like having this, this, this very beautiful community where everyone knows each other and we're very connected. Blessed is the smart and the house in the place and the city and the heart. I know more about my neighbors. I know more the children that live here, the youth that live here. And it all comes down to the teaching and the revelation of Paula. It's, it's, yes, my family grew, it doubled and tripled a bit. Bahá'u'lláh has given us is the meaning of being indigenous. And being that, we have an obligation to contribute to the rest of the world from what God has given us. The last prophets or messengers from God that we have had in our midst, they have talked about winter and springtime. And Bahá'u'lláh is the springtime. There is a story unfolding. A story of humanity's progress through history. Propelled by the teachings of messengers of God. Messengers guiding humanity through its stages of development. And now to the dawn of its maturity. Now is the time of Bahá'u'lláh, the messenger of God for this day. Bahá'u'lláh, its uh, purpose is to unite all mankind, to bring all races, classes, peoples, different backgrounds to be united. The teachings of Baha'u'llah are inspiring millions of people, transforming neighborhoods, villages, and cities in every country on earth. Baha'u'llah è venuto per trasformare l'intero carattere dell'umanità portare un cambiamento interiore ed esteriore nelle condizioni del mondo. Baha'u'llah's teachings are vast in scope, essential in nature. Their central feature is the oneness of humankind, with all its implications for the transformation of those essential relationships that bind peoples and nations, helping them to transcend all forms of prejudice to advance the equality of women and men, to uplift the downtrodden, and to foster economic justice. These teachings of Baha'u'llah represent an end to division and otherness. This is the time for the recognition that all people are one family, for the building of a united world 
that embraces the diversity of its peoples. It is a new chapter of humanity's story, a chapter that began 200 years ago. Persia, 1817. The world is asleep. It is the hour of dawn on an ordinary day when an extraordinary child is born to humanity. He will come to be known as Baha'u'llah. As a child, Baha'u'llah lives a princely life. His father is a distinguished government minister, and his ancestry goes back to the greatest dynasties of Persia. As Bahá'u'lláh grows to young adulthood, he turns his back on a life of luxury and prominence and instead dedicates himself to helping the poor and the oppressed. Baula devient déjà à l'âge de 22 ans. Et comme c'était de la coutume, il devrait remplacer son père dans ce ministère. Baula a nié le poste de ministre, il a préféré rester comme ça. Du jour au jour. Il y avait toujours les nécessités. Il y avait toujours les pauvres. Matin et soir, il y avait des visiteurs. Et c'est pourquoi on l'appelait le père des pauvres. Anapenda binadamu wote sawa, kwamba alijitoa kwa ajili ya binadamu wote. Kwa hiyo kujitoa sio kitu rahisi. Tunajua kabisa mtu paka anajitoa maisha yake kwa ajili ya wanadamu, basi ujue kwamba ana kitu kingine cha ziada. Kwa hiyo alikuwa na upendo. Baha'u'llah's dedication to serving those in need stands in stark contrast with the attitudes among the nobility of the time. Later in life, he would demonstrate the temporary nature of the material world and all its riches by relating a story from his childhood. He describes watching an elaborate puppet show while still a young child during the wedding celebration of his older brother. Très rapidement, des petits personnages ont commencé à s'animer et euh, les petits personnages ont annoncé « Sa Majesté arrive, préparez les sièges ». Finalement, arrive un personnage royal qui était euh, très majestueux, qui agissait avec beaucoup d'arrogance, euh, très hautain, qui avait un diadème euh, très brillant. Et là, des coups de feu retentirent, les trompettes. Euh, tout d'un coup, la tente fut enveloppée euh, de fumée. La pièce se termine et 20 minutes après, il y a un homme qui sort du derrière de la tente et euh, qui a une petite boîte sous le bras. Et Baha'u'llah l'arrête et lui dit « Mais qu'est-ce que c'est que cette boîte ?» Il lui dit « Toutes les choses que tu as vues, le prince, le roi, les ministres, tout ce que tu as vu est enfermé dans cette boîte. » Baha'u'llah tells this story to help explain the true purpose of our physical existence. Ere long, these outward trappings, these visible treasures, these earthly vanities, these proud and overweening souls, all shall pass into the confines of the grave as though into that box. It behooveth therefore every man of insight to fix his gaze upon the goal of eternity. 
Baha'u'llah explains through this story that the reality of this life is fleeting. None of it lasts. Really, the nature of human beings is that, yes, we have a material self that lives in this world and passes away, but we also have a soul that comes from God and is eternal and will continue to last long after the physical body dies. Baha'u'llah nous enseigne que Dieu nous a tous donné du nom et de qualité et attributs, comme la compassion, la justice, le pardon, faisant de nous à la base des êtres nobles. <rire> et que chacun de nous a cette capacité de refléter ses attributs venant de Dieu. Baha'u'llah says, Noble have I created thee, yet thou hast abased thyself. Rise then unto that for which thou wast created. Man was created to contribute to the betterment of society, to advance civilization. And one of the ways that he does that is with the knowledge that he is a noble soul, he is a noble being. Baha'u'llah nos trajo leyes, principios para cambiar, para transformar a la sociedad. Antes se pensaba que las mujeres no podían tomar decisiones, no podían estudiar, pero ya hoy en día, gracias a la revelación de Baha'u'llah, hemos aprendido ahora mismo que nosotros como mujeres jugamos un papel tan importante de poder participar en la comunidad. رجل والمرأة كجناح طائر يعني البشرية لا يمكن أن تتقدم إلا بجناح الطائر هذا فساوى بين الرجل والمرأة ضرورة متطلبة لهذا العصر لا محال إلا بالقبول بها فمن ضمن المبادئ والذي جاء بها حضرة سبحان الله وحدة الجنس البشري وحدة الجنس البشري مع اختلاف ثقافاتهم مع اختلاف خلفياتهم وقبائلهم وأعراقهم وثقافاتهم فتحتاج إلى مبادئ تجمع الكل Baha'u'llah's reputation for kindness and compassion, for insight and wisdom, becomes widespread in his native land. At the same time, a sudden and galvanizing movement begins to spread throughout all of Persia. A young man, known as the Bab, or the Gate, had arisen to awaken humanity and prepare the world for the long-awaited promised one of all ages. Baha'u'llah becomes a prominent supporter of his cause. But the Bab's teachings are met with opposition from those in power. The clergy and the government denounce him and relentlessly persecute his followers. Thousands are murdered. Eighteen fifty, a military square in Tabriz. The Bob himself is executed under dramatic circumstances. Após a execução do Bab, seus seguidores continuaram a ser perseguidos até que milhares foram massacrados. 
E Bahá'u'llá foi levantada uma falsa acusação sobre ele, até que o mandato de prisão foi emitido. He was arrested. He was chained, he was beaten, he was made to walk barefooted, and then he was put into a dungeon called Siyah Chal, literally means the black pit. The place was dark, there was no light, there was one entrance. It was full of filth and unbelievable. I mean, we cannot really get our heads around what that place was like. Bahá'u'lláh had a heavy chain around his neck. The marks the chain left was evident all his life. Well, you look at that tragedy, you look at that, and your heart breaks. People wait for many, many years for the beloved to appear, and then they do this to him. But he was in the same Siachon that Baha'u'llah received inspiration from God, that he is the manifestation of God for today. During the days I lay in the prison of Tehran, though the galling weight of the chains and the stench-filled air allowed me but little sleep, still, in those infrequent moments of slumber, I felt as if something flowed from the crown of my head over my breast, even as a mighty torrent that precipitateth itself upon the earth from the summit of a lofty mountain. And he said his, his voice uttered verses that no one could bear at that moment. So there, in that most awful of situations, that moment of light, that moment when the radiance, when the light became manifested in him, it's just a contrast, it's just practically impossible to imagine. This is the beginnings of you know, many things to come, and we can see that that's had an effect the revelation of God has an effect on the whole world, you know, from that point. Baha'u'llah endures four months of intense suffering in the black pit. Orders are given that he, along with his family, be banished forever from his homeland. Sick and frail, he crosses the Zagros Mountains in the bitter cold of winter to reach Baghdad. This begins a period of exile that will last the remaining 40 years of his life. For the time being, the truth of his divine mission is kept hidden. A year passes. Baha'u'llah takes to the wilderness, departing for solitude to the mountains in the region of Kurdistan. There, he immerses himself in meditation and prayer for two years. At length, Abandoning my home and all that was therein, and renouncing my life and all that pertained thereunto, I retired alone 
and companionless. I roamed the wilderness of resignation. The birds of the air were my companions, and the beasts of the field my associates. The period is reminiscent of the meditation of Buddha at Bodh Gaya, the 40 days and nights that Jesus spent in the desert, and the retreat of Muhammad to the mountain of Nur. In time, the people in the area become aware of the presence of Baha'u'llah, and stories of his greatness spread throughout the region. Когда же он вернется, конечно, это Багдад будет очень большим праздником для общины. И, конечно же, личность Багаулы, она очень притягивала всех. Приходили те, кто слышали о нем и хотели с ним беседовать. И многие обращались к Багауле за советом. Багаулы Багдад это нержахат машолун он тунта отсорятуется. Ты это Багаулы ты нерек машхерар хулеча отсорятуется. Хазат Багаула дар морет ахлак, дар морет аманат, дианат дари, аманат дари, сед, ва дар морет вахдат. و اصول اخلاقی و به خصوص در مورد عدم انتقام و صلح و برابری و دوستی پیام ها و اندرس هایی دادن The life-giving words of Baha'u'llah's revelation flow with miraculous speed and force from his pen In the course of his life his writings would make up more than 100 volumes writings that have now been translated into over 800 languages. During his time in Baghdad, he writes, Is not the object of every revelation to effect a transformation in the whole character of mankind? A transformation that shall manifest itself both outwardly and inwardly, that shall affect both its inner life and external conditions? God sends messengers or great teachers to us. And each of those teachers have come with a revealed word from God. And the word of God then for today is the revelation of Baha'u'llah. The word of God has the potency, the power to change the human soul. But humanity has to learn to use it. So then it's not just for me, it's not for my personal transformation, it's for the transformation of my community. The more we learn to understand the Word of God, the more we learn to raise our own capacity to be able to make effort, to contribute to the betterment of humanity. That's where the Word of God comes alive when it's expressed in service and worship. Ve 
You see, I love the teachings of Baha'u'llah, where they say that we are like a garden of flowers that has different colors of flowers, different designs, and so on. So we understand that we are one. And as we understand that we are one, then we have to work for that oneness. So in the process of working for that oneness, we serve others, we help others. And it's so easy these days to get caught up in kind of focusing on your own uh, troubles, your own desires, and to live a life around that. Bahalo encourages us to turn away from ourselves and actually to think about others. You notice that actually happiness, it doesn't arrive when you're kind of fulfilling your own desires, but actually when you're um, assisting someone else or helping them to accomplish something that they couldn't. And that's been a real kind of shift in mentality for me being able to provide service to the community and encourage others to do so. وفي مقتطف وايد احبه من حضره بهاء الله يتفضل لم يزل كان اصلاح العالم بالاعمال الطيبه الطاهره والاخلاق الراضيه المرضيه. فهذا يخليني افكر شلون شنو العمل الطيب اللي انا اقدر اسويه بحياتي اليوميه؟ شنو يرضي ربي اللي اقدر اطبقه بحياتي وبحياه مجتمعي؟ Our purpose in life right now is um, you know, in service. We still have racism around, black against whites, you know, but even different nationalities. But then, you know, we all come together and we have this bond. And that is like to bring unity into this community and um, to the world. Waragoni Bahola no make a power and make Dayton Daytono. Hopumogoni of Gapan Yavinap, Warago Munin, Comni Tigapano, now they put a pen of our Nagar Muminiwa, up Bogan now Rugatim Nasere Negapan, Wanapaname, Atongi Began Warane Timunia, Kakawa Mega, Apa Sevinawa. Tone nob to began urugone temuna bagan asi gare gare asi gugu gugu ba bosik mugare gare varimu. El conocimiento Dios no lo dejó para todos. No lo dejó para que pocos individuos se beneficien de él. El empoderamiento es tener conocimiento. Conocimiento de lo que soy yo, de lo que hay a mi alrededor, del propósito que Dios tiene para con la humanidad. Y una vez que uno llega a entender eso, entonces busca la manera de cómo ayudo a los demás para que adquieran también el conocimiento y puedan contribuir a la transformación de acuerdo a sus capacidades. Que bajado la vino a, a enseñar a los pobres, curar, sanar y ayudar a los débiles. Bajaula vino a hacer eso. The time of change has come. The old ways of doing things is gone. When that cyclone hit us, many of us almost lost hope. The revelation of Baha'u'llah helped us greatly to adopt the spirit of resilience. When Baha'u'llah brought his revelation to Tana, the, the impact that it did on this island was tremendous. The power of the force of the cyclone was not able to overcome the spiritual force that was in the people. Instead of the people losing hope, they didn't. They rose up. 
that is a physical evidence of something in them. They have the revelation of God's power in them, moving them to do things. They don't lose hope. The influence of Baha'u'llah and his teachings continues to infuriate the Persian authorities. At their urging, the Ottoman Sultan exiles him farther still from his native land. Before departing Baghdad, Baha'u'llah gathers his companions for 12 days in a garden called Rizvan on the Tigris River. It is here, with his tent pitched along the rose-lined pathways, that Baha'u'llah proclaims publicly for the first time that he is the promised messenger of God for this day. In this moment, a new era in human history begins everything would change. The magnitude of the transformation called for by Baha'u'llah is hinted at in some of the words he speaks regarding these days. That which was hidden is now revealed, and that which was concealed is now come. Bestir yourselves to greet this day a day whereon the gates of heaven have been flung open and the clouds of eternity have rained down. His words release a tidal wave of spiritual energy whose effects will extend across countless generations into the future. Baha'u'llah, along with his family and companions, is exiled deep into the Ottoman Empire. First to Istanbul, then Edirne. The authorities hope to eradicate his faith once and for all, but Baha'u'llah's influence proves unstoppable. Years pass. In 1868, he is banished yet again, this time to a harsh and remote colony on the outskirts of the Ottoman Empire, the prison city of Akka. L'arrivo di, di Baha'u'llah in Akka uh, è difficile uh, descriverlo. Il caldo, la mancanza di vento, Dalla porta del mare, dalla città prigione, furono portati attraverso questi vicoli bui e stretti. Baha'u'llah e, e la sua famiglia furono portati nella prigione, un edificio fatiscente, in una condizione miserabile. Tamangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangang
We have accepted to be abased, O believers in the unity of God, that ye may be exalted, and have suffered manifold afflictions, that ye might prosper and flourish. It is during his exile and imprisonment that Baha'u'llah writes letters to the monarchs and rulers of the time, openly proclaiming his station as the messenger of God for this day. Baha'u'llah wrote these letters to the kings and rulers of the world during an age of empires. This is a period of time where a few rulers governed most of the world. Baha'u'llah призывает these правителей to something. И очень важно, что это призыв к миру. К миру, а также к тому, чтобы вот эти сильные миры всего не притесняли свои народы. How remarkable that this prisoner under such appalling conditions would write to the rulers and the kings of that time to offer guidance on how to lead their people with compassion and justice. The message he gave them was that a ruler should listen to their people, they should govern in the interests of the poor, and they should consult in all their affairs. The principle of consultation is a way of making decisions in a manner that allows individuals to be focused on the pursuit of truth and the good of the whole. Attraverso la consultazione, eh, gruppi di persone possono condividere liberamente le loro idee e eh, esprimersi liberamente e poi collettivamente con la forza dell'unità del gruppo tramite la consultazione si prendono delle decisioni collettive. E quindi il, il fatto di poter costruire concretamente l'unità eh, è un dono immenso che Baha'u'llah ci ha dato. Paola a fait quelque chose d'extraordinaire. C'est très difficile de voir les gens qui n'ont pas été à l'école avec les gens qui ont fait des très grandes études ensemble. Et ces gens-là discutaient sur un point pour trouver un point de vue. Consultation can serve as a means for giving voice to the masses. Baha'u'llah teaches it's for everyone. All of us were absolutely encouraged to participate in this process. And it's also closely related to attaining justice on our planet in that all groups have the right and the privilege and the duty to participate in a consultative process. We live in a time when it's becoming increasingly difficult to hide how many people in the world are suffering, like how many injustices, how many challenges humanity is facing. We don't just want to get rid of injustice, we actually want to build justice. When we come together with others to find strategies, solutions, ways to address many of the complex challenges that we face in society, we have to do so in a, in a way that builds unity, in a way that strengthens collaboration, that uh, builds consensus. Baha'u'llah teaches that the faculty of justice, the faculty of our soul that allows us to distinguish truth from error, allows us to be fair-minded, to treat others in equitable ways, is essential to that process. In fact, justice is the greatest instrument for the establishment of unity. Una ahora tiene una visión más amplia de lo que significa la unidad. Y tanto de diferentes culturas, lenguas y etnias, somos los mismos porque somos hermanos de un solo Dios. The world is in great turmoil, and the minds of its people are in a state of utter confusion. We entreat the Almighty that he may graciously illuminate them with the glory of his justice and enable them to discover that which will be profitable unto them at all times and under all conditions.
Baha'u'llah spends nine years confined behind the walls of the prison city of Akka. Over time, the leaders of the city grow to love and admire him. They eventually ignore the Sultan's order and request, even beg, Baha'u'llah to leave the confines of the city. Finally, he moves to a place outside the city gates, called Bachi. Veliki broj istaknutih ličnosti su ga tamo posjetili. Jedan od njih je bio Edward Granville Brown, koji je bio um, profesor u univerzitetu u Cambridge. Ta njegova posjeta je na njemu ostavila dubog utisak i on je odlučio da napiše izvještaj o tome. I found myself in a large apartment. A second or two elapsed ere, with a throb of wonder and awe, I became definitely conscious that the room was not untenanted. In the corner, where the divan met the wall, sat a wondrous and venerable figure. Those piercing eyes seemed to read one's very soul. No need to ask in whose presence I stood, as I bowed myself before one who is the object of a devotion and love which kings might envy, and emperors sigh for in vain. A mild, dignified voice bade me be seated, and then continued. Thou hast come to see a prisoner and an exile. We desire but the good of the world and happiness of the nations, that all nations should become one in faith and all men as brothers, that the bonds of affection and unity between the sons of men should be strengthened, that differences of race be annulled. What harm is there in this? Yet so it shall be. These fruitless strifes, these ruinous wars shall pass away, and the most great peace shall come. May 1892. After 40 years of suffering and exile on behalf of humanity, Baha'u'llah passes away here, in Bachi. His resting place, now restored and beautified, is the spiritual heart and a place of pilgrimage for millions of people around the world. People striving daily in their home communities to put Baha'u'llah's teachings of unity, justice, and equality into practice. <laughs> the change called for by Baha'u'llah is of amazing magnitude. He's not just calling for cooperation in social structures and in interpersonal relationships, but he's calling for a reconceptualization, a rethinking of relationships such that they embody the principle of the oneness of mankind. And it's going to require collaboration with others, interaction with others, and learning from experience, and then weighing things against this magnificent, huge vision. Baha'u'llah ka sapna hai ki vishu mein ekta aayega, to matlab ye nishchit hai ki gaon mein ekta aayegi. Kuch log, aur hum bhi esa mahsus kare the ki esa sambhav nahi hai. कारण है कि सभी लोगों को एक सूत्र में बांध लेना 
ये तो संभव नहीं है क्योंकि सबका सोच जो है वो भिन्न भिन्न है लेकिन अब पता चल रहा है कि बाहुला का जो सपना है वो निश्चित आने वाला समय में साकार होगा और उसका प्रतिफल अभी दिख रहा है हथवन समुदाय में कुछ बुजुर्ग लोग कुछ युवाओं और सभी का जो बातचीत होता है तो उसमें विचारों की एकता देखी जाती है Vengo de la comunidad de Panamá, de una comunidad indígena, una comunidad que estaba sumido totalmente en el alfabetismo. Pero cuando la revelación de Bajaula llega ahí, afecta el pensamiento, afecta la cultura para generar un cambio y una transformación desde adentro de su pueblo mismo. Bajaula habló de el papel de la educación de una familia, de un pueblo, de una raza y por primera vez los amigos entendieron que la educación era una señal poderosa para la liberación. Si sí, la revelación de Bajaula ha sido como una luz poderosa que ha sido capaz de transformar a un pueblo, el de nosotros. No es posible que esto pueda transformar a cualquier pueblo en cualquier parte del mundo. The mission of Bahá'u'lláh in this day has a different scope from in the past in the sense that we are talking about establishing a new civilization, basically a spiritualized world civilization. We are trying to learn how to build different kinds of communities, really create a different culture that reflects the teachings of Baha'u'llah. One dedicated to service, to collaborating with others in great endeavors, in unity, working with peoples of all backgrounds. That is the conception of religion that we find in Baha'u'llah's revelation, one that is leading us toward the next stage in humanity's evolution, which is the unification of the human race. <laughs> there is a story unfolding. It is the story of humanity's encounter with God. An encounter playing out around the world, in villages and neighborhoods, towns and cities, in which every soul is a vital participant. It is an encounter full of promise and illumined by the words of Baha'u'llah. Béni est celui qui préfère son frère à lui-même. In the garden of thy heart, plant not but the rose of love. Kullukum athmaru shajaratin wahida wa awraqo ghusnin wahid. Tkhir dilhi yurtin sul nigil ol soran hundur lukhtun tuni irghiddi imgij jadda khilsun baydi. Свет единства так могуществен, что может осветить всю землю. The aim of this wronged one in sustaining woes and tribulations, in revealing the holy verses and in demonstrating proofs, has been naught but to quench the flame of hate and enmity, that the horizon of the hearts of men may be illumined with the light of concord and attain real peace and tranquility. <laughs> <laughs>